Hey guys, I'm going to do this one a little bit different today. I'm actually at one of my garages and I uh, just wanted to get a shot of where I am and uh, I, I guess really just make this one as, as quick as possible because uh, I'm in the field right now and I don't have time for all this description and operation stuff and I just want to walk you through a test procedure that I'm going to do on this Envoy. It's like 95 degrees, I'm sweating my butt off and uh, you know, I just want to get done quick and uh, I want to make a quick buck, so uh, I'm at one of the garages I work for, and I want to walk you through this GMC Envoy. It has a uh, secondary air injection system fault coat. And that code is a PO410, and you see the description right there on the screen. This is a 4.2 liter engine. My first thought going into this vehicle is where is this air pump? I know it's an electric air pump, and uh, I had trouble locating it. Uh, I'm looking at the exhaust manifold over here on the side and I see this canister looking thing right here. And to me at first that looked like the EGR valve. And then I looked a little bit closer at it and I can see some, some uh, rubber tubes going to it. And we don't generally do that with EGR valve. So that has to be my diverter. And then I looked at the connector on top and I see two wires going to this unit. So, what I know about this design is all the vacuum controls are missing on this one. This one's completely electronic. So it has a electric air pump and an electronic solenoid, which is actually the, the diverter valve too, if you want to call it. Uh, I guess one step I missed, you know, I should have done this live instead of uh, re-filming it. And then you can really actually hear and, and uh, you know, see and follow my thought process. So I'm gonna try to recreate what I did so going back to the scan tool, what I did to find this air pump too, because I, I didn't notice the plumbing right away. I, I went back to my functional tests, knowing it's an electric air pump, and I wanted to turn it on. So I'm going to output controls, and there's no other air pump data on here other than the air pump relay. So I turn this on to let you listen. And up here at the top, just clicked on. So you can hear the pump. And that's when I eyeballed all the plumbing. Turn it back off. The next thing I looked for was I was looking for some data PIDs that were associated with this system. And unfortunately there are no other PIDs on this design. It's just, like I said, a solenoid that is the diverter. Some of the designs, they've actually put a flow sensor in this unit. And I really thought that's what it was when I first saw it. And th that isn't the case on this one. It's only a two wire. So with this trouble code, we have some options. Uh, I'm thinking about the air pump itself, wiring to the air pump, the plumbing from the pump to this diverter, and then also this uh, diverter itself. So I keep calling it a diverter, and uh, I apologize if, if I call it a solenoid at one point and then a diverter at another point. It really is the same. It's one unit some of the older systems would separate it and they'd use a vacuum solenoid that would control vacuum to the diverter. The diverter would open and allow air into the exhaust. So diverter, solenoid, whatever you want to call it. So I've already ruled out the pump itself and the controls for the pump because we can hear it turn on, but what we want to do is check for flow. And so I'm going to turn it back on. Then what I want to do, is I want to reach down here To the tube that comes to this and it's a squeeze type fitting so I'm gonna pop this tube off I'm not sure I can film it and do it at the same time and take a listen to it I'm pretty sure that's picking up very well on the camera it's got some real nice flow to it I'll plug that back in let you listen And you can really hear that air pump struggling and so with it plugged in. And so what that suggests to me right from the get-go is that this solenoid slash diverter is not opening. So what we need to do now is some solenoid checks 
and uh, we got we got to determine system design before we can check it. So let me t turn the air pump back off. And my first thoughts going through this, I'm gonna disconnect it. And guys, really all I grabbed for my test equipment, because I'm trying to be quick here, is I just grabbed my test light and I grabbed a jumper wire and a T-pin. So let me get this stuff set up and talk about what I did. Okay, so here's my high tech test equipment. <laughs> My test light, jumper wire, little T-pin, one of my pros from my Pico kit, actually. And I know I'm using an expensive scan tool here, but you know any scan tool that offers bi-directional controls will get you as far as we are right now. If you don't have a scanner with bi-directional controls, then you know you're going to work a little harder. You got to find the relay. You're going to have to energize the relay manually. Of course, with that, you're going to need a wiring diagram. All this stuff I don't want to do. Time is money. So we're going after this connector here and we're gonna determine how this solenoid functions. I don't have a diagram, again, uh, I do have some wire colors, typically, you know, blacks and, uh, well, at least on a GM, a black wire would be a, a ground or control and the pink black would be a power feed, but we can't go by those. We, we really have to check the circuit. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my test light to ground and I have the key on right now. And I wanna check my light, of course. I'm not showing you this, but I'm touching battery positive. And it's a good thing I'm doing that because right now my test light is not lighting. Got some corrosion on this battery. Really giving me a hard time here. You know, just cause you're connected to the battery doesn't mean you're actually on the battery. All right, so another thing that we don't wanna do is these pins they're really small look how big this test light is we don't want to jam that test light in there that would be really dumb so that's what i'm using this for it's a lot smaller just going to take my test light and use it and uh just going to touch gently i'm not going to stuff this in there either on my two pins and i'm looking for my test light to light and i don't think i can show you that I'm trying to get my light in the picture pin to the left and the pin to the right my light does not light now this is where experience comes in guys I know from from the past that these solenoids that control airflow into the exhaust system are operated off of the same circuit that the air pump is and so what I need to do is I need to turn the air pump on and then check for power here and I'm pretty sure one of these two is going to light up so let me turn the air pump back on Okay, air pump is on, pin to the left. That's my black wire, I have nothing. Pin to the right, you see my test light lights. So what we know then, we turn this off so we don't damage this pump. And the reason I say that is uh, if this diverter is stuck shut, then with running this thing with the pump running and the diverter closed, that's really putting some higher amperage on this motor and I don't wanna do any damage to it. But you saw the test light lit with the, looks like pink and black, lit when I turn the air pump on, so that's my power for the solenoid. And that means to me that this solenoid is gonna be controlled on the power side. And if that's the case, then my black wire, which is not lighting my test light right now, should be a constant ground. Now it could be computer controlled too, but I'm pretty sure it's not. And so what I'm gonna do to check that is I'm just gonna switch my test light polarity to battery positive. I'm not gonna get you a shot of that. I'm moving my test light right now to B plus. And of course, anytime you move your test light, test leads, scope leads, whatever you're using, you better check that light and make sure it lights. Because when I did this first time, it didn't. And uh, I was doing my tests and really what I had was a bad connection on my battery and it really messed me up for a minute. So right now I'm connected to uh, battery positive and when I touch this black wire on this connector on the front side, just touching the pin, 
This test light should light if my suspicions are correct that this is a constant ground on the black wire and you see right there that it is. So let me ask you guys something. Do we have everything we need for this solenoid to turn on? We have a power, but only when the pump turns on and we have a constant ground. And the answer is yes, we do. So is this pump actually, or is this diverter actually opening? And I'm saying it's not. And I'm basing that off of the sound of the air pump. It sounds restricted. When I disconnected that line, you heard how, how much uh, volume of air was there, but more importantly, you heard, maybe not on the camera, but you can hear that the pump has much less stress as far as uh, current flow, the noise of the pump restriction. Let me do it again, I'll let you listen. I'll get you down here maybe to see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take this line off again turn the air pump on. Again, when we turn this air pump on, that solenoid is also turning on. Okay? Um, you know, maybe one of you guys are going to want to see this solenoid with it plugged in. I know I always preach loaded circuit, loaded circuit, and that wasn't a loaded circuit. So I, I would agree with you. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's back probe this connector. And uh, we need to switch our test light polarity. Test light's going to ground, checking my light. All right. So I'm resting this against my, my pin. Hopefully my light's in the screen here. I'm gonna reach over, turn this on. This is gonna be a loaded test now. And you can see the red glow there. I'll do it again. So again, same power feed that's on the pump circuit. It is plugged in. I'm using a test light, not a voltmeter, but I'm still doing a loaded circuit test. If it can light my light, and control the solenoid at the same time, trust me, there's not a voltage drop problem on that feed wire, no problem there, okay? We do the same thing on the ground, leave it plugged in. Gotta switch my test light polarity, going back to battery positive. You can do this different ways. We'll just do it this way. Check your light. Right now, as soon as I plug into this, my light should light. And you see that it does. And again, it's a really an unloaded test. I'm only putting about 200 milliamps through my test light here. So what I wanna do is turn this pump on and make sure that that light stays lit. So I've got a little bit dimmer. That's just my connection here. I'm having issues at the battery. Turn this pump on. You see with the circuit loaded, that's that ground is loaded. That test light is still lit. So there's not a, there's not a problem with the power. There's not a problem with the ground. Doing loaded circuit tests with my test light. Hopefully you guys are following what I'm doing. All right, so do we have everything we need for this thing to open? We do. And I'm saying by the sound of the pump, it's not opening. What I like to do with these is I'll turn the pump on and off. And if it has the vacuum type diverters, I'll take the vacuum hose on and off and listen for the pitch change of the pump. I can't do that on this one because it's all one unit, but I'm telling you by the sound of this, see if we can pick it up again. This is with the line plugged in. I'm gonna reach down and unplug the line. Now this is gonna make all kind of noise on the camera. You can almost hear that pressure release. Listen to it, I'll plug it in. There is no flow through this system. So that's pretty much it, guys. We, we have a stuck shut diverter solenoid valve, right? This guy here. I am 100% confident that we can make that call. Now I'll show you one more. This one's a little bit more high tech. Um, Actually, before I do that, quick review. 
solenoid shares a power feed with the pump. It's not computer controlled directly. Computer controls the relay for the pump, but then the load side of the pump circuit shares power feed with this. This solenoid has a constant ground. Very easy to identify this circuitry without a diagram, just knowing how these things operate. Time is money, guys. All right. So let me show you one more. This one really isn't necessary, but I think it's worth showing you. And that is what we can do. Use our scan data. And uh, I'm gonna stay on this list and let's customize it. And deselect them all. And I just wanna pull up my short-term, long-term trim and my upstream O2 sensor. And what we're gonna do We're gonna look at these PIDs, so I'm gonna warm it up, so I'm gonna to have to shut this off for a second. We'll warm it up, and we'll watch our O2 in our short term primarily, and when we're watching those two, I'm gonna turn this air pump on, and if that diverter's opening, the up, upstream O2 should drop lean, and my short term fuel trim should climb, and I am positive we're not gonna see that reaction. So let me warm it up, get the O2 hot, and then I'll show you this last step. All right, that's warming up. I haven't really been running it that long, maybe a minute or two, but the O2 is moving, rich lean, short term is correcting like it should, which is making the O2 move. And when we do this test, it's really a little bit of insight here too on what the OBD system does with this, is it takes and, and pretty much looks at these parameters to know if this pump is actually working on this design anyway, because there's no flow sensor involved. It's using the O2 to know if the pump is actually putting air into the exhaust system like it should be. So I'm gonna turn the pump on. I'm still in my bi-directional mode. Turn my pump on. RPM changed there a little bit just from a, an alternator load. And notice our O2 did not drop lean like it should have. We would wanna see this O2 drop lean. We wanna see the short-term fuel trim correct. No change at all, guys, just proving what I told you guys before by the sound that our system, our, our pump or our diverter is stuck closed. So yeah, that's it. Pretty, tip, uh, pretty typical procedure that I follow on these GMs with these electric air pumps. Check the diverter, check the solenoid if it has one on the vacuum type. This one doesn't have the vacuum control so it really eliminates a lot of the variables. Check the pump, check the flow of the pump, and uh, there you have it. So hopefully you guys like that. Again, a little bit different format from what I've been doing. Uh, this is kind of off the cuff, no diagram. Just a scan tool with good bi-directional control, a test light, a jumper wire. Didn't even need the jumper wire. But that's it. Pretty typical GM design. There'll be more of these. I think maybe I'll look for one in the future with the vacuum controls and then I'll look for one too. I've seen these again, guys, with, with flow sensors on top. So we'll have to attack one of those too in the future. Look for it, we'll do one when I see it. So thanks a lot.